uh, now we go for our next project. Uh, the project is Next Hour. Here we, we have uh, Antonio Rinaldi. Good morning. Good morning, She's, Alexandra. Good morning. Uh, she is the senior researcher at the NIA Sustainability Department of Policy and Territorial Systems Explain. He's the coordinator of uh, Next Hour. Uh, Next Hour is Advanced Material Solution for Next Generation High Efficiency in Concentrated Solar Power Tower System. Uh, thank you very much to be here today with us. And the floor is yours, Antonio. Thank you, Angela. Okay, uh, I'm Antonio Rinaldi, I'm a researcher at Enea in Italy, and uh, we are coordinating this uh, large uh, project that is now coming to an end. Uh, Next Hour is really a project focused on uh, a new generation of materials for a new generation of uh, concentrated solar power tower systems. And um, I'm going to present this on, the, on behalf of, of the entire consortium, of course. I'm going to keep it uh, uh, with, uh, with a view of uh, giving high highlights, uh, uh, image gallery, so that you can probably grasp uh, what was the purpose and what was the outcome of the project. So this was an, an innovation action. So high TRL, uh, the commission asked us to deliver something that was of potential impact and uh, potential rapid industrial uptake. So something that could make an impact, maybe not now, but in, uh, within 10 years, okay? Uh, the overall funding was 5 million. Uh, these are all the data and you can, of course, uh, always check uh, uh, more details about this project in our uh, project website. Again, a large consortium, including uh, CMAT, who is also here uh, in, uh, among the speaker in this round table, um, but we really had several uh, partners throughout uh, Europe, uh, including large industries, both in uh, um, uh, metal alloy uh, materials and ceramic materials. So uh, when you talk about CSP and you look at how you can uh, innovate uh, and, uh, and, and push forward this technology, of course, you have, you're faced with a choice between several architectures which are at different uh, stage of maturity. And we are focusing on uh, central receiver uh, atmospheric uh, or atmospheric type. Uh, which was uh, which was in, in need of um, uh, let's say of, of a better uh, ceramic receiver, and uh, this was the starting of, of our uh, of our uh, rationale. And we tried to make this uh, uh, a little bit more these components a little bit more reliable, so that uh, this technology could become even more appealing. Because the European Commission is asking uh, two, two things essentially: uh, to increase the operating temperature levels, so that you can use uh, higher temperature thermal cycles, which are uh, which opens up many uh, technological opportunities, and at the same time, doing this with uh, uh, components that critical components that are able to withstand uh, uh, these harsh conditions for many, many years without maintenance. In this case, the solar receiver was asked to be uh, paced uh, versus a 25 uh, lifetime without maintenance, and this is quite challenging. Uh, and this, of course, is to keep down the OPEX and so the LCOE. Uh, what was the starting point, really? Uh, right now, we have com commercial uh, CSP plants, which are uh, molten salts based, and the working temperature is not above 600 uh, Celsius, most likely 550. Uh, the molten salt is uh, heat transfer fluid and a heat storage fluid. And of course, this can be coupled and it's coupled with uh, steam generators, but you cannot really couple this with a gas turbine, for instance. For that, you need to bump up uh, the operating temperature much higher. Uh, and so we uh, we try to design a, a complete approach to shorten the life cycle, uh, so, sorry, the creation cycle of a new generation of materials from concept all the way to deployment within four years of a project. It was a challenge by itself. We tried to do this by including inside also standardization body, which is UNE, for instance, from Spain in this case, and uh, and try to make sure that our choices were uh, approved and uh, based on uh, a gap analysis of what was uh, currently used by the industry. In the practical terms, uh, three things were really uh, targeted by Next Tower. So new durable monolithic ceramic materials that are able to withstand more than 1100 Celsius. New energy thermal storage that can work above 600 Celsius. And of course, to do that, you need to change both uh, heat transfer fluid and the materials that go. Yeah. 
we have lost Antonio. He's frozen. Antonio, can you hear me? I think that uh, his connection is, is lost. We are going to wait a couple of minutes to try to recover him. Antonio, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now, now. Yeah. Okay. You are back. I, I don't know where you lost me. Uh, I'll try to to take it uh, 20 seconds mm -hmm. from 20 seconds before. Okay. Yeah, I was uh, okay. uh, yeah. one minute, something like that. Oh, um, one minute. Okay. But by the way, I hear I hear you. Maximum, maximum. I think that was less yesterday. Okay. Okay, so uh, I was just saying that uh, we are trying to de deploy SIC, silicon carbide materials for the solar receiver, so uh, uh, um, uh, ceramics, and then we are trying to use liquid lead for the first time in uh, CSP as a heat transfer fluid that can work at 850 Celsius, so more than 200 uh, Celsius above the current state of the art, and to do that you need a new technology to contain the fluid, and we devised a new alloy based on fecral, uh, ferrum chromium aluminum alloys by Sandvik. And of course, we needed to, to show this at a full time, uh, full scale uh, level. Uh, so, in terms of uh, ceramics, real quick, we are using uh, now an installation at uh, the CISA One Tower at uh, PSA CMAT uh, at uh, Eduardo's house. Um, and uh, um, you can see here some of the ceramics that have been made in the, in the, co in the, in the project, uh, these are the real component, the final one, the final design after the screening. You can see them here. They were done from a uh, uh, high throughput uh, uh, screen uh, process where we tried several lattices, several designs, so to optimize this from a reliability and, uh, and fluid uh, point of view. Uh, this is uh, the tiles, uh, the, the caps being installed, and this is the final installation that is right now running for field testing. So we will uh, probably hopefully be able to report something interesting here. Uh, what is the other part of the demonstration? Because we weren't able to really do everything at once because the liquid lead part was uh, to prove to be extremely heavy and we couldn't retrofit uh, what we had available, you know, the infrastructure to actually create one installation. So we resorted to create uh, uh, an installation at Enea Brasimone here in Italy for the liquid lead part. Uh, we produced a lot of engineering design going from uh, conceptual really to manufacturing and, uh, and uh, construction design because this was not existing. So it, it really we started from scratch. So there are literally hundreds of this type of drawings. And uh, uh, we developed certified procedure because this type of components needed to be certified by law because they are, they are pressurized components. You can see the overall vessel, which is a single vessel uh, um, uh, architecture for uh, charging and discharging of uh, heat. And uh, you, of course, by, by means of primary and, uh, and a secondary heat exchanger, uh, you can see here some pictures repertoire uh, from the repertoire at Walter Tosto, who was our uh, uh, constructor, let's say manufacturer, main manufacturer. And you have to consider this is uh, something that is 50 tons in uh, overall uh, weight. There are about 10 tons of shell and there are 35 tons of liquid lead. Uh, of course, we qualified of the procedure. We started with small uh, with small components, and finally we went all the way to to a full casting, full uh, 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 large scale industrial production with Sandvik. So they produce tubes, they produce the flanges, they produce labs with these materials, and we work them. Uh, you can see some of these components are quite complex in geometry, and uh, these are all pro produced by special steel. And these are not, I want to highlight this, we really try to make an effort not to stay at the lab scale. And you can see that this is something that the industry will probably look at uh, with a greater interest because maybe some of these components will fit some, uh, some new usage in a future project. So I have to commend my industrial partners because both uh, Sandvik and Walter Tosto, uh, among everybody else, have done an excellent job in this case. This is uh, a fairly complex assembly purely made of uh, fecral, so this new alloy that we have developed, and is able to withstand uh, liquid metal corrosion at 850. You have to consider that we started from our experience in AI in the nuclear industry, because liquid lead is used as a coolant for the fourth generation uh, uh, nuclear fission, okay? But it only works at 500 Celsius, so 
these are completely different materials that that have never been used anywhere, not even in uh, in nuclear. So this is uh, the the main vessel, as uh, you can see during the the, the making, and um, and is the one that is going to be heated up to 850. And uh, this is the main flange that allows to bring uh, in uh, uh, the air, hot air in uh, and cool air out, let's say, to connect the, the heat exchangers. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the, during the making again, uh, the, the main pieces as well as the fully dressed uh, component. Of course, when they come in an air, we, we made the tracing and we you can see the naked version as well as the as the traced uh, version with the heating cables and with active cooling. Uh, this is only the storage vessel, which is something that is supposed to work up to 550. And the other one instead is the S200. And of course, we designed entirely from scratch the, the control loop for the to, to actually control the thermocycling. Of course, we are also looking at LCA because uh, we have done this exercise and now we are going to report to the European Commission what is the real perspective of application of this uh, of this possible? What is the potential of this innovation in CSP? And of course, it depends on not only on technology readiness level, but also on system readiness level. And we are, of course, using models, trying to see whether we can use, for instance, this type of technology for mini towers of one megawatts. And of course, we hope that uh, CSP can be used uh, as temperature increases with uh, extensively in, in across the industry for automotive, chemical plants, mills, expanders, extruders, nuclear sector. I mean, and, and of course, uh, the, the applications could be countless. The main idea is that if for now is that we if we are able to to uh, really increase the temperature operational uh, temperature by 200 Celsius, we can try to couple this to a gas turbine so we can uh, directly uh, not only we are not only limited to a, a steam turbine, but we can go to gas turbine opening up much more possibility. And of course, we can also with a better heat, allow me to use this word to try to power process industry and uh, and so a new uh, range of applications that are now that are now precluded. And thank you for your attention. I would stop here.